For much of our existence, we humans didn't understand risk. We didn't see how decision-making could influence our future. Our only tools were hope, superstition, and guesswork. The rest was left to the gods. And while many of us still use hope and guesswork, they're not our only options. We have more sophisticated tools to help us make decisions. Knowing this, it's easy to assume that the history of decision-making has been one steady path towards rationality. But that's just not the case. Even today, our understanding of human behavior and decision-making resembles more of a tug-of-war between rationality and irrationality. During World War II, the world experienced a rational revolution. There was an explosion of interest in statistics and probability. Scientists of all types were brought in to help the Allied war effort. Their job? To run the numbers. They poured through the data and figured out how to improve war operations. This led to more reliable manufacturing, better quality control, and even the more efficient deployment of personnel. As the war ended, these scientists took what they had learned and applied it beyond the military. Many of them were trained in physics or statistics, so they used math and numbers to bolster up the theories of the past. Future Nobel laureates like Kenneth Arrow and Harry Markowitz used math to think about risk in more sophisticated ways. They showed us tools beyond our own intuition, math and statistics. And they showed us how those tools could help us uncover the patterns of the past, making the uncertainty of the future less frightening. Game theorists like John von Neumann and Oskar Morgenstern sought to develop axioms of rationality, a set of truths about rational behavior. They showed that by checking the boxes of these axioms, we could be thought of as rational beings. That if we had clear and defined preferences, if we preferred apples to oranges and oranges to pears, then we could model our rational behavior. There was a new precision and confidence in our ability to model human behavior. These models of rationality became the status quo, and economists began to use these models to describe how people make decisions. In the post-war era, the general belief was that measurement dominates intuition. Rational people used information, not emotion or intuition, to make decisions. But some began to question, is this how people actually make decisions? How often do we use formulas to decide? How rational are we really? Well, most of these concerns were squashed with a simple phrase, as if. The economist Milton Friedman used the analogy of an expert pool player to explain. He argued that the expert pool player doesn't know the complex formulas that determine where and how far a ball will travel, but acts as if they knew those formulas. In a similar fashion, people may not have perfect information or use complex formulas, but they act as if they were rational beings. And that's pretty much the same thing, right? For many, this as-if argument was all the convincing they needed. And, at least for the next few decades, it was enough to preserve the image of rational humans. Now, that all began to change when two psychologists infiltrated their way into the world of economics and ushered in what can be thought of as irrationality's revenge. Their names were Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky, and they wanted to know how people actually made decisions. They started to run experiments, lots of experiments. And what did they find? They found that the rational models of economics aren't great at describing how people actually make decisions. Instead, people often use heuristics. A heuristic is just a fancy word for a rule of thumb. They're shortcuts that allow us to overcome the limits of our rationality. But the problem is that heuristics can lead to mistakes. As an example, suppose we randomly pull a word out of a book. Is it more likely that word starts with the letter R, or that R is the third letter in that word? Perhaps you guessed that word is more likely to start with the letter R, but it's the other way around. R is more likely to appear as the third letter in a word. It's much easier to think of words that start with the letter R, and for this reason, we assume those words are more likely to appear. This is known as the availability heuristic, and it illustrates how heuristics can lead us astray. Kahneman and Tversky found all sorts of situations like this. They spent decades running experiments, and as a result, they assembled a long list of how humans deviate from rational behavior. It's important to understand that even though Kahneman and Tversky's work focused on how heuristics lead us astray, they didn't believe that using heuristics was a bad idea. 
Heuristics are incredibly helpful. They allow us to process information and make decisions quickly. The problem is that they're not always reliable, and they can lead to severe mistakes. Because of this, some people have taken Kahneman and Tversky's work as evidence that humans are irrational. But Kahneman himself wrote, Our research only showed that humans are not well described by the rational agent model. The truth is that the scope of our rationality is still up for debate. Even today, we don't have a perfect understanding of human rationality. If you take an intro to economics course, you're still likely to see lots of rational models. However, Kahneman and Tversky's work helped birth the field of behavioral economics. And many of these behavioral economists continue to investigate how irrational our choices really are. As the field has grown, research has shifted towards figuring out how to work with our nature rather than against it. We operate both in rational and more irrational ways. To ignore either is to ignore a part of ourselves. We have more decision-making tools available to us than ever before. And we don't need to label ourselves as rational or irrational to use them. Perhaps the greatest reminder of this comes from Harry Markowitz, whose mathematical work on optimal portfolio allocation won him a Nobel Prize. Yet, for his own retirement investments, he is said to have used a simple heuristic. 1 divided by n. Spread investments equally across all funds. The story of our rationality is one that will continue to evolve. It's unlikely that we'll ever be able to label ourselves as strictly rational or irrational. And that's okay. The task we should focus on is finding ways to work with our nature rather than against it.